right. Hey, uh, uh, Takei, thanks a lot. Um, thanks for joining us. Um, so, you know, just before uh, you know, ask our panelists um, to introduce themselves, I just want to sort of set the stage here, right? So, you know, the panel is about exchanges, uh, ensuring stability and resilience for you know the long term. Um, as we move towards you know uh, what we call mass adoption, um, exchanges will become even more important as you know, they bridge um, the gap for users. So, uh, like them or hate them, um, they're essentially um, you know uh, there's increased pressure um, to perform, to be compliant. Um, in, there's increased scrutiny, uh, market pressures, etc. Um, so, as a security-focused uh, company, I can only look at you know past incidents, um, you know hacking, loss of liquidity, um, fraud to major incidents like FTX, right? And having major impact on you know the notion of long-term uh, stability and resilience. Um, and so, is it possible? Um, so, yeah, guys, um, maybe you guys want to introduce yourselves, starting with Rafael. Sure. I start. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Uh, my name is Rafael. I'm the CEO of Bitmax. My background is actually coming from traditional finance, as nowadays in crypto, quite a lot of people. Uh, so I'm originally from Germany, coming from the Buffett regulated uh, stock exchanges world. I started to dig into blockchain around 2014, 2015, when I set up my own startup, trying to create an exchange to trade gaming items, so items from different games against each other. Um, While well, the blockchain, I think, in our days, we would say NFTs. At that time, I was like not aware of that, being very honest, so a little bit wrong timing. Um, but I moved on anyway. I helped a other German exchange building up a crypto custody business, same as a crypto exchange and a spot app. And at a certain point, I decided for myself I want to stay in crypto. So I traded actively since 2018 and moved more and more into that space, kind of being impressed by the innovation and the dynamic of crypto versus the traditional finance world where the 96,000th instrument was celebrated as if it's something new, but it was just like reinvention 35. So at that stage, I moved to Bitfax, and I'm now responsible for marketing, communication, customer support, and compliance. Hi, everyone. My name is Henry. I'm the CEO of BTSC, also pronounced BitC. It stands for Buy, Trade, Sell, Earn. So primarily, we are a crypto financial services company, a crypto infrastructure provider. We operate in exchange. We operate enterprise solutions where we help our customers and partners around the world build out their technology and provide them with services. And we also operate a global payments business that helps with people do on and off ramping of crypto. We've been around for into our sixth year now, a uh, team of about 300 around the world, a lot of engineering talent that we continue to hire. So happy to meet with anybody uh, at this conference if you're looking to work in crypto. All right, hello everyone, my name is Carmen. I'm the Chief Communications Officer from CoinW. It's a centralized exchange. A little bit about myself, um, I was previously in forex industries. Myself, I process uh, anti-money laundry licenses and also derivative licenses that regulated from uh, Australia. Uh, two of the selling points and uh, what we've been working on from CoinW prospect, um, Coming to um, Taiwan, this um, beautiful island, we wanted to work very hard to be able to localize our exchange into Taiwan. Hence, uh, we have been working very closely with government in order to obtain OTC license, and enable our customer that can use the fiat money in exchange of cryptocurrency and have the first experience. And the second thing of CoinW is, um, to simplify orders, trading fees and stuff, we bring it out to one flat fees. Yeah. I understood that for very um, much of the newcomers and first timers on trading on crypto exchange, they don't actually know what is trading fees and what is come on the tier. So bring it out into a one flat fees and able to um, fast adaptions and understanding of how does this uh, trading works. Awesome. Uh, thanks, uh, Carmen. That was uh, also leading into my second question, but thank you. I was going to start with you anyways, right? So um, why don't we uh, move down the line and say, you know, um, so, you know, what sets you apart, right, um, as an exchange from uh, some of the others? Right. In extent of uh, what I just uh, mentioned above, 
Um, we have been working on a very early stage uh, obtaining OTC license. Having said that, it's, uh, we have a partner uh, amongst Taiwanese, around 25 of the outlets of money changers. You can actually work in with your cash money fiat and on to exchange into uh, your favorite uh, cryptocurrency in terms and having it transfer into CoinW and have your first try on the uh, like tradings or in exchange of any um, potentials coin projects that you see that yeah could bring you, I don't know, yeah, this bucket of money. <laughs> yeah. uh, for BTSC, we operate at the intersection of CFI and DeFi. So our team, I think what makes us different amongst all the other exchanges is both having operated for many years in the space into our sixth year now, and having both the people that built the company come from both the traditional financial sector as well as from decentralized finance and building at very successful applications there. Uh, the other differentiator is we don't just operate our own exchange, but we help other people operate their businesses as well. So this opens us up to understanding a lot of the other intricacies that other exchanges uh, see when they face their customers. And we basically are able to then not only help them improve, polish, and upgrade their systems, but as well as our own. Pulling all of that liquidity back into Bitsy's main exchange, which then provides a very, very liquid trading experience, very high speeds, and probably some of the best price discovery on the market. On the on and off ramp side, uh, I think, can't really say that number, but we do operate one of the leading ODC desks uh, in the region. Uh, so able to handle transactions uh, in the mid uh, nine to 10 figures per 24 hours for any client. I think BitMEX doesn't need too much of an introduction. We've been here around forever. I think that is one of the main uh, differentiation. We have seen crypto winter bull runs coming and going. We're still here. Um, our security is definitely one of the best, and I can say that not because we do a lot of audits or we we do endless amounts of panthers, but more about proven track record. We have never been hacked. We have never lost a coin, and that is for us very important because it's not like the customer comes to you not only because he wants to do some profit, but he wants to be sure that he can withdraw his money at any time and BitMEX has proven to do so uh, in the past. And the second thing is we truly believe in Bitcoin, which is still the majority of the business. We're talking somewhere around 50% more or less of the market is dominated. And especially in a bull market, you want to have nominated BTC contracts because you're not only profiting off the uh, upwards, you're also profiting that your collateral keeps on gaining more and more value which we think is very important. We have the second most liquid BTC product still with us. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you on the BTC stuff, right? So uh, I'm an early Bitcoin guy as well, so definitely a believer in that. Um, so Raphael, in, in sort of keeping with the theme, um, you know, with the markets changing and shifting constantly, right? Um, you know, obviously you mentioned a little bit, but you know, what else are you guys doing at the exchange to, you know, be stable and be resilient over the long term. I think I think that's that's a very important question, and um, I think every exchange is trying to do its best. I think we all are looking to AML, KYC. We're trying to follow all the regulations. We all do regular audits. Um, as said, we all do pen tests. We look after our IT security. Um, what we do we did at Bitmax additionally is the last eighteen months in the beer market. We we saw that the markets are going down and we're of course the same as other um, exchanges we had to reduce internally but we also took the opportunity and started to revamp our systems. We changed our whole infrastructure, we changed parts of the APIs, we are reworking right now broker and exchange and now you could ask why are you doing this? Actually with one and only purpose, every bull market which came after the other one has proven to come with an immense increase in volumes and users. And we truly believe we will see that again. So we are prepared to take up way more volumes than we ever had before on our exchange. And this is what we prepared for. That's for me resilience as well. I think, yeah, Rafael covered almost all the points. I'm a small fan of BitMEX, big user back in the day. I was Sydney Shelf and Sid. For exchanges, resi resiliency, I, I tell our team all the time, it's not about who comes first, it's, it's always about who lasts the longest, right? And in order to do that, uh, you have to not just operate in the world of 
crypto and developing out dApps and uh, bootstrapping as fast as you can and building out, but you have to invest very heavily into your mid and back office. So during the bear market, I think that's one of the things we did. We deployed a lot of money specifically for this function to many of the points that Rafael was talking about. Uh, and this is very key because now that the market has sentiment has gone a lot better, uh, if you do it now, it's, it's, you're going to have a, a couple months of hard work ahead of you. But I think uh, we've all invested heavily during the bear market to do this. So uh, glad, to, glad to see volumes pick up and glad to see users that are happy. Right, actually on top of uh, the well spoken, one thing is we need to uh, enhance the server storage that also can be prevent of uh, legacies in, in case any bull run has been uh, well in, like outside of the right? yeah. Everyone has been very prepared. And on the other hand, uh, talking about stability, um, we have uh, did a survey and uh, identified and analyzed on what the past that uh, what we study from. Mm, the first step is how to educate your uh, users. I believe a lot of the users are um, in the retail client markets. Um, we still need a lot of um, new um, educations into how to open a cold wallet or hot wallet. We wanted to make this surfa surface yeah, as simple as the web tree entries. Yeah. Uh, in this case, more of the mass adoptions can bring to uh, more conversions and in order to bring in uh, stability and growth in the actions ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, you know, as Rafa mentioned as well, so you guys are getting ready for the bull, bull market. So, you guys all agree that the bull market is on, on the verge? Yes? No? It's already here. It's already here. We've been already. Yeah, it's at the corner. Okay. Yeah, I mean, Bitcoin's going up, making everyone happy. Came down a little bit, but hopefully, uh, you know, it's drawing the attention of folks. Um, so, the bulls are here, right? And you know, three to six months in this industry moves very quickly. Right? It's almost like a year. Um, you know, what are you guys looking at in the next two to three years well, with your exchange? Um, yeah. So, what does the next two to three years look like? For the continuing, I think uh, continuing on grounding and rooting on education is our first priority. Um, that's why uh, our Taiwanese team we have been um, organizing a very good graduately. Uh, offline trainings um, in a complimentary way uh, to the audience. Any one of it, if you feel free or if you are curious about what is cryptocurrency and the first entry, you are more than welcome to reach out any of us uh, to understand a bit more of our uh, like courses, sharings, and stuff. Yeah, two to three years is a, is a very long time in our industry. I think there will be a lot of things that happen in two to three years. I think it's also looking back to two to three years ago and understanding the lessons learned from there, right? Not to do the same thing over and over again, expect different results. I think it's to innovate from that. So part of the things that we do is definitely work on a per country basis, understanding what the regulators want us to do and how we can help them, how we can help the users per country and being able to separate and segregate all these different operations globally and merge that together so that's you crypto user could really have a truly global experience while being operating in a safe and, and, and compliant way in their own kind of their own region. Uh, other things that we look at are very abstract uh, tools that are kind of really far out there. It could be things as different as say non-identifying KYC. How can we work with companies that are using these cutting edge tools to identify on-chain users so we don't have to uh, you know make them jump through hoops just to onboard to the exchange just to trade but because they already have a good lasting uh, kind of track record in crypto. But this is like a very ext extreme example. Uh, but I think we continue to build on and making sure that we're on top of the right trends, on top of the right products. Uh, and also on the other side, being able to filter out, because in exciting markets, a lot of stuff comes to exchanges. Every token wants to get listed, every project wants to be there. So being able to filter out and manage the expectations of the users with what they're able to trade and invest into. Our job, right, that's our responsibility as an exchange. Uh, we have to be there to make sure we provide this gate of protection for the user. Uh, that's something that we also uh, intend to do better and better over the next two to three years. Yeah, I think it, two or three years is, is super hard to say. I would say in two or three years, or every exchange is probably looking at the same, how can I make sure that I'm still a, existing in two or three years, can identify the necessary trends um, I think it's very important to not forget profitability of your customers. So 
the most important thing and why people are actually coming to us is they want to trade, but they're not trading for fun, they are trading to make money. So how can we ensure that they are not burning their money, but they are going on the right coins, doing the right trades? So it's a lot about helping your customers to improve themselves. Even, even BitMEX, and it's not a secret, we're more focusing around experienced crypto derivative traders, but nevertheless, even they start and you need to help them, you need tutorials, you need seminars, you need to show them how to do better. We will focus, for example, on um, different kinds of trading boards, more around copy trading, trying to that to show them the most profit profitable strategies which are right now in which market situation better for them. Um, we're also looking at, like for BitMEX, we're also looking at options when we launch that as well, and we're looking at a different setup of our affiliate program. Um, but just saying, like two or three years is, an, is a very long time. I think the KYC part you mentioned is very important. It's, it is still, it still feels sometimes very, very hard to get on on an exchange. And that's why people tend to go on places where they can quickly buy and sell without any any real KYC, which comes with the advantage and the risk. And we do in crypto. I think we learned our lessons now a few times that too many risks. Not having any money anymore so it is on us as central exchange and this is something we, we need to strive we need to make it very smooth but still compliant and and education um, is, is definitely key for you know the users the retail users right so um, so kind of in a different direction a um, little bit of you know I, I'd say like the elephant in the room obviously we're talking with exchanges um, you know Want to get your guys' opinion on the Binance situation. So, Certic Binance is one of our investors as well, right? And so, um, it's 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 a topic that we hear and talk about a lot. But you know, from the exchange perspective, what what do you guys think? I I mean, I'm starting now, and the first thing I would say is, oof. I mean, we at Bitmax went through the history with U.S. regulators. Everybody knows that, not a secret. Um, and I mean that because they, I mean that we have a lot of competition between the exchanges, but still, um, I hope Binance will do best with it. What, what I see which comes up as problems is, Binance has now to invest a lot into risk management. They will have to build up legal way more than before, AML, compliance, controls, all those functions which are not speeding you up, but they are slowing you down. So what that in the end means is you're moving more and more away from the customer demands and trying to foresee what's the next interesting thing for a customer. And you move more and more to how can I mitigate my risk? How can I make sure that the regulator is fine with me? How can I make sure that I'm complying to what I signed? And by this, it becomes you become slower. And we've seen that, BitMEX saw that we experienced it. We've, we've been through that tunnel. Um, and we know it will be a tough time. And that's, um, I don't think it's a secret as well. That's why other exchanges are now looking at Binance and see an opportunity of moving parts of the funds and the customers away from this still very dominant player in the market. Yeah, their effect is very far reaching. Uh, I have the utmost respect for Binance and the team and what they've built. Uh, they really carved out a name for themselves in our industry and helped many people onboard into crypto assets. So I think what they've done, regardless of what the DOJ or CFTC issues arise or could potentially arise again in the future are, uh, I think that they've, they've obviously set a very bright path forward um, and a lot of precedents are set because we are, we prefer an environment that's not by enforcement but rather by regulation. So we look to work with countries and regulators that are following that route, right? The, the route by enforcement is one which we will carefully uh, make sure that we don't step on and learn the lessons from those that went ahead of us. Actually, the case study that the know has been very positive takeaway for the whole industry, isn't it? Yeah, which means that uh, the whole, um, like globally, we are not trying to take away the fundamental technology of blockchain and cryptocurrency. It's just that we need to more uh, comprehensive on to how it does it works. Yeah, what does the government body regulator they doesn't want to see is the money has been transacted without their acknowledgement, or potentially it's like money laundering. But they forget about one point, which is the um, topic that I have just discussed uh, days ago in the panels on the traditional fiat industry. 
on an annually, year, yearly, has been laundered around 800 billion to 2 trillion. This is the money that went illegal. No one blame about this. No regulator talk about this. And only 1.1% of Bitcoin has been transacted into illegal wallets. And the amount is around 20, 26 billion. Compared to traditional finance, we are just small. I don't know what they say. <laughs> yeah. But uh, having said that, um, we, we wanted to look at the frameworks, of course. Uh, centralized exchange has been uh, very compliant with uh, the regulator. What we wanted to provide is very straightforward and clear. We stand together with the government and uh, regulations body in order to provide our end users a very secure environment and certainty and come into understanding of these new technologies. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and I think, like, you know, every bull market or bear market always starts off with, you know, some, some big incident, right? And, and hopefully, um, you know, the Binance situation provides a whole lot of learnings and, and drives it to this bull market that, you know, we're, we're all agreeing on. Um, so, last question, um, and this will probably bring us to a close. Um, since we're in Taipei, uh, we're at TBW, um, so what are your plans, right? Um, why, why Taiwan, right? What's going on? Um, what are you here for? I think for us as, okay. I think for us as Bitmax, um, we've been, and I, we, we had yesterday our side event, and we got asked a lot of questions like, why are you suddenly showing up in Taipei? Why are you getting so loud again? I think we've been very quiet in the last two, three years. We had, as said, our own lessons. We focused a lot on ourselves, and we truly believe that we have to play more regional. For us, for us, Taipei or Taiwan is just an interesting market, and. Uh, I mean, I'm based in Hong Kong, so that that kind of was a natural move. But it it also gives us the opportunity to speak uh, with our customers more again. So it wasn't it wasn't a move to understand all of the Taiwanese market or talk with the regulators a lot. For us, it was really like coming here, talking to the customers, trying to understand where the market is moving, what we can offer them, what's missing, um, and also as always, um, seeing our competitors, talking with them understanding where they are going in the end it's um, we, we, we're in crypto industry we're still very early so it's so much I always say we're, we're right now like at a donut or muffin size the whole cake is still there so it's so much we can still go for um, and I think it's a perfect opportunity for Taiwan especially Taipei it's a it's a very special place in our mind our hearts at our company uh, so for those, for many of them who don't know, we've, we've been pretty quiet in this market for the last five, six years. Uh, not because of any other reason, but because we've operated a very global business. Uh, in Taiwan, we intend to actually set up our regulated exchange in 2024. So anybody who wants to be a part of that, be a brand ambassador, work with us in any way, speak to our team, anybody wearing a Bitsy t-shirt after. Uh, but in Taiwan, it's special because we've invested heavily in this country over the last five, six years. Even the last two years, I believe we've paid out over 10 million in bonuses to our engineers and our team, employed over 500 people uh, just within the last three years, just to build crypto infrastructure, uh, all without taking a single customer from the country. So to us, it's a very meaningful place to finally set up uh, an independent entity and to serve the people in Taiwan. Okay, when Coinobit did some research on to emerging markets or it's already uh, this world countries, we found that Taiwan is a very uh, interesting kind of mix. We understood that uh, Taiwan is one of the famous uh, semiconductors uh, providers in the international status. Uh, and they have a very open arm into new technology. That's why uh, Coinobit, when we first entered uh, Taiwan, we understood that the citizens here, the populations here, could be a very fast adoption into the concept of understanding blockchain and crypto trading. It's also added a, a, a little bit more interactive when we're trying to show you uh, a new exchanges or new um, technology underlying new concept into this market. Um. So, uh, obviously, uh we're coming to a close. So some common themes, right? So obviously, um, working on the technology, um, trying to be compliant, um, making it safe for users, educating users, 
and, and, and just being prepared for that bull run, right? And, and any bull runs after. Um, yeah. And maybe just saying, realizing that the bull market is already there. We don't have to wait for something anymore. Binance situation clearing up, that's just one of the many things that's fueling it. The, the American government saying that the yield situation will change, that triggered the bull market. It's already there. The question is just in what to invest and how, how strong are you believing in it? How strong are you leveraging it? Yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Yeah, or last. Just, just to wrap up, yeah. In the traditional finance way, we say uh, there's two fundamentals analysts that you need to apply on the trading uh, situations. One is te uh, technicals analysts, the other one is prior actions. And now we literally see two of these has already been seen in front of us on the tables. So I would uh, have a few words. Don't wait uh, if you are a speculator or investor. I think it's still a good time to enter. All right. Thanks, guys.